Hello, welcome to the weekly portion for Kitissa. And now we are going to have some insights with the idea of the Ramchal. Uh, and uh, we can start right now. Ve'ikach mi adam ve'yetzir etu becheret ve'yasuchu egel masechat ve'yamru ele elochecha Yisrael asher halucha mi'eretz mitzayim. And he received at their hand and fashioned it with graving tool and made a molten calf. And they said, this is the God of Israel, which brought thee up uh, of the land of Egypt. So why did uh, a calf-shaped figure emerge from the fire? It is a very interesting question. It could be any other thing. Our actions judge us through our divine. If we basically do good thing, we receive rewards. And if if we do a wrong thing, we face punishments. This creates a struggle within everyone, a battle between good and evil and, and completely natural process that we experience every day. So here we have a symbol of a, a calf, a bull symbol, emerging from the fire, represents this impurity and associated with the impurity itself. Okay, Egel Mesecha, according to the text, is the molten calf. Masach and, and the letter He <laughs> together mean that if it's covered by a layer through the divine, so each of our negative actions basically pushes us further away from the inner circle of the creator that will prevent us from not seeing very clearly. We can see an obscure uh, images, uh, ideas. So Egel, okay, the calf, the, the value of it, we have an ayin that is 70, gimel 3, and lamed uh, 30, altogether 103. Just like mincha, which means uh, as a gift, with a value of mem uh, 40, nun 50, het 8, and hey 5, and also totaling 103. So Egel and Mesecha, we have the same value. That is meaning that it's counterbalancing the negativity caused by uh, the uh, Egel and Mesecha. Uh, uh, and um, this is uh, making a balancing here. So how could Aaron, the high priest, fall into an error of believing in these negatively charged individuals that is called the Erev Rav? It truly amounts a significant spiritual setback. That is what you can see. The Jewish people needed to experience this idolatry, uh, deepening uh, the distinction of later uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to strongly believe in monotheism. So mistake in the process of independence, that is uh, awakening the realization of we want to be, be belong, guiding us to consciously return to the right path. So we learn uh, what not to repeat and what to restrain us uh, from later. Okay, so first we need to make those mistakes in order to learn out of him. This is this was the process. So the negative individuals that mixed among the Jewish people were uh, the Ered Rab, the mixed multitude, deceiving the uh, in, in the Jewish nation. What did they originally personally see when Aaron collected the gold from the crafting in the golden calf taken from the fire? They believed that the sanctity and holiness were associated with this act, since Aaron, the high priest, before me. Okay, so the golden calf perceived as savior from Egypt became an idol. Interestingly, there was a need for a tangible object, and the Arab Rav, the mixed multitude, claimed that this statue that Aaron uh, ex uh, extracted from the fire came from the divine. So the goal of uh, this mixed multitude was to disrupt the unity between the Jewish people and the Creator. Okay. So then what happened? And he took the calf it had made and burned it with the fire and grounded it to powder and strewed upon the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. So when Moses saw that the people had made an idol while he was on Mount Sinai, he shattered the stone ta the tablets. Uh, he came from a very high spiritual level after spending 40 days on the mountain. 
He had previously stood also at the high spiritual level, obviously, but became, we are talking about even, he arrived to more higher state. So Moses witnessed how the people spiritual degraded in his absence. So in despair and helplessness, he shattered these tablets that he was holding. So he, he was also interested in who influenced these uh, others and uh, how the adult statue was created. So he wanted to punish those who in, incited this, the mixed multitude. It was necessary basically to remove this kind of people from the, among the Jewish nation. So Moses, who had earlier accepted this responsibility of dealing with the mixed multitude, was the one who watched for because the divine wanted to, the creator wanted to kill them already in Egypt. So this was a previous disagreement between Moses and the creator. The creator had uh, initially preferred that uh, the mixed multitude won't be part of the Jewish people, but Moses insisted that uh, there would be no problem with taking them as well until this point. So this continued till this uh, pure uh, point of the um, golden calf. So we know that we have discussed during the plague uh, that uh, 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 of uh, darkness, uh, more uh, many Jewish people died who weren't worse uh, being saved uh, due to their negativity. So the Creator in, in uh, intervention occurred that Moses made Moses made them to drink a special water that is was explicitly said in the Torah how to prepare this water, and uh, and under uh, the during the night. When they slept, they died. So they were deserving basically as a justice by the Creator. So uh, no one protested against drinking this water. If you weren't among the mixed multitude, the water uh, proved nourishing and supportive and killed only those that were among that group of um, Erev Rav, of the mixed multitude. So this was basically the intervention of the Creator. Uh, it had to be handled it very carefully to identify uh, and remove this mixed multitude within the Jewish camp. The souls that didn't meet this criteria for being uh, people of the uh, 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 of the Creator. Many other souls from various nations were mixed among the Arab Rab, and their influence within the community it was indeed very significant. And uh, punishing them with a visible penalty would be would have been very difficult. Hence, divine intervention was necessary at this point. And also to execute this test, Moses needed to connect in a special energy for the removal of this mixed multitude. So this was the energy of Yosef. Okay, so Yosef having the numerical value of Yud 10, Vav uh, 6. Summer 60 and pay 80 altogether 156. So, this was the type of energy that Moses uh, 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 went into, and this is later the same energy is manifested in Pinhas, who defended the Jewish people during the epidemic later on. Okay. It makes basically a great courage to go against the opinion of others. So it will still carry out uh, your plan. It will face, you will face uh, numerous enemies. This era Rav could have been very uh, pleasant people, but they are so very negative. So uh, reflecting on the story of Joseph that rejected Potiphar's wife, uh, the same energy appeared uh, in Moses and in Pithas. Uh, uh, the detailed account of this kitty portion explains how the test of a woman that has uh, she has suspected of uh, the uh, of cheating uh, her husband is executed. It is mentioned because it is uh, having this allegory illustrating why uh, the situation. It is very similar uh, with the uh, with the golden calf and. Uh, Mm, because the relationship between the Jewish people and the Creator is often like, a, like as a marriage. So therefore, okay, uh, by this erecting an idol, the Jewish people cheated on the, uh, on the Creator. 
on God. So this is what happened. So this is the same uh, story we have in the Torah and how a woman uh, that is cheating uh, uh, her husband is going to be checked by uh, uh, properly. So this faith, uh, so this is the reason it is explained in here in details. Uh, and what will happen with the faith and how the relationship between the Jewish people and the Creator and God will be built from this situation, it will be the future question. So something other in, uh, very interesting that uh, we have here is this face-to-face. -face. <laughs> So this is interesting. To see uh, the glory of God. So, this is what we're going to cover right now. Moses asked the Creator, All of me to see your glory. So, Moses saw the face, uh, uh, face to have, was in a situation of face to face with God. So, why after this he specifically requested to see the, glor uh, the glory uh, of the Creator separately? So how can we basically see the glory of some something, someone, right? Until now, the Creator spoke uh, to Moses through a filter, okay? And we know it, Amut Ha'anan, the pillar of cloud, okay? That is stated in the Torah. Um, and then we have also in this text, Ve'yomer, lo tuchal lirot et panai, ki lo yireni ha'adam v'chai. And he said, cannot uh, see my face, for men shall not see my, uh, me and live. We, we have no pre, uh, knowledge of any other prophet who encounter this face-to-face uh, uh, -face connection with the God. Only Moses. All other prophets establish these indirect connections with the Creator through dreams or angelic messengers. Even that is uh, of a different nature compared to our earthly reality. The other prophets were terrified while receiving these messages from the Creator. We can imagine that Moses, in much more intense sensory situation, could fully be presented. So this kind of a connection is not for many individuals, for uh, these uh, chosen ones, right, obviously. Moses wasn't afraid and remained very calm through this face-to-face -face, uh, uh, encountering the uh, God. So face-to-face -face implies a direct connection between Moses and the Creator. And then, then Moses uh, asking, Haveni na et kavotha, show me I pray the glory. So he, uh, he covered so much that he wanted to see the Creator without any filters to have a direct face-to-face -face encounter. So Moses wanted to observe his own reaction to understand how he could enter his presence. On one hand, he encountered a personal experiment of his, curious about what would happen when facing uh, God, the Creator. So Moses wanted to see how he would react uh, in this uh, direct uh, uh, um, direct connection. On the other hand, the Creator didn't want Moses to face any overwhelming issues. So that is revealed, it is a chesed. So the Creator uh, put the attribute of chesed for, uh, for itself and more merciful aspect of it. So this is why in the Torah, uh, the, the, the Creator doesn't disclose its inner name, the tetogrammaton, but only reverse the external energy. This is already a lot comparing, uh, considering that no human could fully perceive it. So this is what we have in the Torah. Vayomel lo tuchal lirot et panai, ki lo yareni adam v'chai. You cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. 
So the creator tells Moses that he won't be able to comprehend it fully. So it reveals an aspect that Moses would be able to grasp. It's a, this is the good part. Because if the creator had shown its complete sense, Moses would not have survived that uh, presence uh, that time. So knowing and seeing that the creator's name here impl uh, amplifies that the letters come alive and basically becoming entities and make themselves visible and uh, vivid uh, um, entities. So, and then Moses was capable of knowing the creator's uh, name. Elohei Masacha Lota Selecha, who shall make the mo no molten gods, et haka matzot tishmor, shivat yamim, tuhal matzot, asher tsevita, lemoet chodesh haaviv, ki bechodesh haaviv yetzata mitzrayim. The fast of unleavened bread shall you keep seven days you shall eat unleavened bread as I command thee and the uh, time appointed in the month of Aviv for the man, uh, month of Aviv who comes uh, out of Egypt. We see a connection between idolatry and eating unleavened bread during Passover. It's something very interesting. Matzah, the bread of poor, protects us from Accessing uh, uh, the, the ego, ego's action. Let's not forget that each festival occurs only once a year, and its uh, one occasion should be sufficient for the entire year. One who is uh, careful and to avoid eating unleavened bread during the seventh day pays attention to the negative side of the Yetzer Hara, hara the evil inclination. Such a person is likely to be more mindful to other aspects in their surroundings. Everyone must read uh, themselves of Hamed. You shouldn't own and, uh, and uh, shouldn't have possessed living uh, bread to avoid using during Passover. So those who adhere to this practice are less likely to deviate from the right path and less likely to idolize foreign gods also. Uh, when the Jewish people left Egypt, immediately they managed to fall into this uh, idolatry that uh, we just read. So this is explained partially because they didn't have the opportunity to observe Passover properly at the first year, as they left Egypt in a very uh, quick, uh, uh, quickly. By the second Passover, however, they were more vigilant and to, they ensured the post, the, they shouldn't possess to Hamets at all. Likely in the first place, they didn't eat hametz, but they could have possessed uh, during uh, the departure. So uh, this made it less likely for the temptation of idolatry to arise among the Jewish people in later times. We mentioned that Egel Masecha, Masachei, uh, that's meaning that it's covered by a layer through the Creator. Here, consuming or possessing a hamet is this negative action that obscures the picture from our eyes, and that therefore we can't understand what is going on. This is something we shouldn't allow ourselves to do, even to do this day. Uh, let us not see clearly. Maybe no negativity in the relationship between me and the and Creator. It is worthwhile to always try for improving uh, this connection. Peter Hamor Tifte Bese Veiblo Tifte Varpato Kol Bachor Baneha Tifte Velo Yeru Panei Rekam. And the uh, first uh, first thing of us who shall redeem with the lamb, and if you not redeem it, then you should shall break its neck. And the firstborn of the son who shall redeem, and none shall appear before me empty. What makes the donkey so special animal? And moreover, it is not even a kosher animal. Donkeys were used uh, for carrying loads during travel. We know that for the tzaddikim uh, to travel, it also has uh, a significant importance, saying that it is not only a physical journey, but also a spiritual uh, journey and uh, uh, development. Abraham also used a donkey for the Akedah, for the binding of Isaac, with his uh, final test. In Hebrew, the root of the word donkey, Hamor, can be, uh, uh, it is Homer, 
meaning uh, physicality. In ancient times, donkeys were exchanged for the firstborns, as mentioned in the Torah. Uh, donkey serves humanity as a tuma of impurity, essential, uh, essentially serves a kadusha or holiness also. Since everything, even in the negative aspect, it is under the guidance of the creator. So all energies have one starting point, the creator, even though that one, one wing is uh, positive, one wing is negative. Vaidaber Hashem el Moshe, lechret ki sichat ameha asher halita meyaretz mitzrayim. And God spoke into Moses, go uh, get the down for the people that uh, uh, so brought up of the land of Egypt have dealt corruptly. So the creator instructs Moses to descend spiritually to draw closer to be uh, closer to his people. Lech red, get he down. And the value of it, it's Lamed 30, half 20, Reish 200, and four uh, was uh, Daled. So altogether, 254, just like the word Hamor, okay, which signifies uh, maturity or physicality. So Moses serving his people had to descend from this very high spiritual level where he was uh, because uh, that wouldn't benefit him as uh, being a leader uh, so much higher than his nation. So his sp the spiritual distance um, couldn't uh, serve any uh, anyone. So it emphasizes that these individual achievements are not important as they are the team goal. So the goal is that the Messiah would arrive, so the arrival of the Messiah. And everyone must contribute this collectively. If it depended solely on Moses, a spiritual level, the Messiah would have come already. It is not about the individual performance. So also the Chazal teaches that the word Hamor, donkey, would be kapad, uh, word representing Hacham, wise, Mufla, wondrous, Rav, many Rabbanan uh, uh, teacher. So Hamor, it is a... Uh, uh, is made of this word. Veru bnei Yisrael at panei Moshe ki keren or panav Moshe v'hashiv Moshe et hamaspa al panav ad bo ledaberito. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face was sent for beams, and Moses put the veil back upon his face and they went into speaking with him. So Moses' face, uh, face shone when he descended from Mount Sinai. However, he had to conceal this radiance. It is not uh, coincidental that the divine remains hidden in our world. Man is the most wondrous creation of the creator, but he is prone to commit mistakes. So hence the divine in, um, introduced the concept that if you do good, you receive a reward, and if you do wrong, you uh, face punishment. This doesn't always manifest immediately, so that might be why uh, we interpret it more loosely and we don't understand uh, this reward punishment, uh, uh, the consequences of it. If there were immediately consequences, every wrongdoing, the world might not be here is today. The workings of this system is remain hidden and only a few truly understand how it operates. So questioning why they receive a certain reward or uh, punishment. There are two types of light. We have this 32 paths of wisdom. Another system is the 50 gates of wisdom. So Moses reached the 32 levels when he brought uh, the Torah from Mount, uh, Mount Sinai, but he didn't uh, traverse all 50 gates. The sages suggest that only the Messianic time will be reaching these gates when the world achieves its purpose and uh, uh, perfection. Those who attain the 32 levels will shine and radiate line, Karen or much like faces of uh, Moses, a face of Moses. He has to see the uh, kavod, the glory of God, also having this numerical value of 32. So uh, Moses reached the 32nd level, explaining why he desired to see the creator's face in the same way. So Moses consciously expressed that having reached the 32nd level, 
he wished to see the corresponding divine energies. So when the Israelites committed the sin of idolatry uh, with the golden calf, Moses unfortunately also descended from this 32nd level. From then on, his face no longer shone as well. So it was somewhat better for him to conceal his high spiritual level as the people's spiritual state had also declined. So this was previously discussed in our conversation and in the ultimately the, uh, about this redemption that I mentioned, everything will change because sins won't be uh, committed anymore uh, after that. Only ascend and descend will occur. So the 50th level which no one has reached uh, till now, will become clear during the Messianic area when uh, Messiah Ben David arrives and he will be the first one to possess this level. So with these thoughts, I hope uh, for speedy uh, arrival of the Messiah, Yavu HaMashiach, Bemera Amen. Uh, thank you and see you. And see you next week. Bye-bye.